we know his concerns about the variant. He thinks that he looks at Europe and is worried we're about to have a carbon copy. Where are you on the scale of, of, of concern? Yeah, so I'm concerned uh, not, we're not going to have another Europe on our hands. We're not going to have a major fourth surge. Uh, but what we are looking towards and what looks like is about to happen is we are going to see a significant bump in cases in a bunch of states. Uh, and that means more infections, more hospitalizations, more deaths. The reason I'm uh, pretty confident we're going to avoid what is happening in Europe is twofold. Uh, one is uh, we vaccinated a lot more people. And second is that we vaccinated a lot of our highest people, the older folks. And so I don't see us getting crushed in the same way. I was saying in the spring that we were going to have a fabulous summer. Yeah. Through June, it looked really good. I did not expect that we'd have a third of Americans refusing to get vaccinated. I just didn't see that coming. I thought everybody wanted to put the pandemic behind us. Everybody wanted to move on. I figured 90, 95 percent of people would get vaccinated and we could be done with this thing. Oh, my sweet summer child, what do you know about fear? Fear is for the winter, when the snows fall a hundred feet deep. Fear is for the long night, when the sun hides for years and children are born and live and die, all in darkness. That is the time for fear, my little lord, when the white walkers move through the woods. Thousands of years ago, there came a night that lasted a generation. Kings froze to death in their castles, same as the shepherds in their huts. And women smothered their babies rather than see them starve, and wept and felt the tears freeze on their cheeks. So is this the sort of story that you like? In that darkness, the White Walkers came for the first time. They swept through cities and kingdoms, riding their dead horses, hunting with their packs of pale spiders, big as hounds. What are you telling him now? Only what the little Lord wants to hear. I think people are underestimating how bad this is going to get. We don't need a federal uh, mask mandate, uh, and we certainly don't need a federal lockdown. Uh, the, here's the issue. Uh, what we're seeing is surges of infections uh, in communities with low vaccination rates. We're seeing little bumps in cases in places like Vermont and Massachusetts that have high vaccination rates, but they're fine. Their hospitals are fine. They're not likely to get overwhelmed. So I think what you're going to really need to do is localize policy, uh, and you're going to have to find some ways of both in, uh, increasing vaccinations and controlling the virus until more people get the shot. What you're saying is you're, uh, you're claustrophobic. Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's go, Catherine. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, say two words to you right now. I, I want you to listen to them very, very carefully. Then I want you to take them out of the office with you and incorporate them in, into your life. The best way to turn this around is to get people vaccinated. Yep. You ready? Yes. Okay, here, you're there. Stop it! These numbers are staggering. I want to start with you by talking about the number that jumped out at me this morning. More than 100,000 people being treated for COVID in hospitals in the country right now. The highest number in seven months. We are a year and a half into this pandemic, Dr. Jha. Does that number frustrate you? Yeah, good morning, Celia. Uh, absolutely, it does. It's just because now it's so preventable. Seven, eight months ago, we didn't have a vaccine that was widely available. But I, I'm compelled to. My mom used to call me. No, Daddy. no, no, no. No, we, we don't go there. But I've been having this dream. No, we don't go there either. Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy how we've turned this into a political issue. We have managed to somehow politicize this. I think businesses, hospitals, schools have to step up and say, we do this for all these other vaccines, we're going to do it for COVID too. I mean, this, you know, this is not Yiddish, Catherine. This is English. <laughs> stop it. So I should just stop it. There you go. Uh, schools, where... What do you think, are we getting it right this year after having gotten it wrong last year? I know you advise, I think, your kids' school, and so kind of what are they doing? Generally, we said, if all the adults are vaccinated, most, ki most kids are vaccinated, everybody's wearing a mask, people are getting tested once a week and you have good ventilation, distancing just does not become as important at that point. And we're five weeks in, uh, infection 
the numbers in schools are lower than they are in the community and they're pretty low in the community. Yeah. And ever since schools opened, infection numbers in our community have gone down, not up. It's working fine. Um, and you know, what's interesting, right, is of course the response from a chunk of people are, Florida didn't do any of those things and Florida was fine, but Florida wasn't fine. Like Florida had a lot of kids getting infected. The UK's got a lot of kids getting infected. And then of course you have a bunch of other people who make the argument, well, you're in Newton Public Schools, Newton's a uh, relatively wealthy school district. Sure, you can do that. I have to say that that argument had more salience a year ago. I don't buy that at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of resources out there. Um, we're not talking about things that are super complicated to pull off. I mean, maybe weekly testing is a bit, but masks are not, uh, ventilation upgrades are not at this point. I do think most school districts can do this. And if they haven't, there's gotta be some accountability for that. Whew, uh, I'm bulimic. I stick my fingers down my throat. Stop it! <laughs> Um, so as a general rule, I feel like schools should be fine this uh, fall. And then, of course, with kids getting vaccinated soon or younger kids getting vaccinated soon, that'll add another la layer of protection. My expectation is kids will go through this entire academic year um, largely fine. We're a mess. We're the biggest mess in the world from this virus. Yeah, well, there are two things that are going on, Shep. I mean, one is a sheer amount of misinformation. And really, th that is what's killing us. I mean, we still have a large chunk of the country that's not vaccinated, uh, not boosted. That's who's filling up the hospital. So the mess in the hospitals is driven almost completely by unvaccinated or high-risk people who are not boosted. <laughs> I'm sorry? Stop it! Stop it? Um, we and I think the administration didn't do enough on having enough testing available. Um, we still fight over masks and crowded indoor spaces. Like there are some basic simple things that we can do to get through the surge, get back to our lives. And we fight about every single one of them, even places where the data and the evidence is really quite clear. Yeah. Yes, S-T-O-P, new word, I-T. <laughs> so what are you saying? Tonight, millions of students starting the new year back in the classroom with COVID cases exploding. I'm just like worried, really worried for my kid because he has asthma and I have cancer. So, you know, it's like a double whammy. I mean, you, 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 you don't want to go through life being scared of being buried alive in a box, do you? I mean, that sounds frightening. <laughs> yes. Then stop it. <laughs> I'm hoping Omicron gives us the lessons we need to manage the rest of this pandemic, however long it lasts, and move to a new normal uh, where we treat this virus much more as an endemic thing. And so I'm hoping that this really is the transition variant that gets us into a different footing for future variants and lets us manage them much more effectively. So I should just stop being afraid of being buried alive in a box. You got it. Good go. Well, it's only been it's only been three minutes, so that will be um, uh, three dollars. Well, I only have a five, so. Well, I, I don't, I don't make change. Sorry. On August 9th, another plane took off. A second plane, a second bomb, and a second city. Nagasaki.